What's up guys? I'm Rob from Winter by Winter Woodworking and welcome back to my shop. Today we'll be looking at a beginner woodworking project using reclaimed materials. Now the cool thing about this is absolutely anyone can do it and I'm super excited to take you through the process. So this is what we're going to be building. It's a rustic mini stool. It's made using an old scaffold board. It's quick, it's easy to make and it doesn't need many tools. So it really is the perfect introduction to kind of woodworking and especially if you're looking at making furniture, this is the project for you. So let's build. So this is the scaffold board I'm going to be using. I found it on Facebook Marketplace for about five pounds. I'm gonna mark up my board 40 centimeters, 35 centimeters, and 35 centimeters. I make the cuts using the mitre saw. The 40 centimeter is the top and the two 35s are for the legs. The width of a scaffold board is 22.5 centimetres. I set my table saw to 20 centimetres so I can make the legs narrower than the top. This is just personal preference. I make my cuts using the micro jig GRR rip block. This thing is great for safety, keeping your fingers from the blade. Keep the off cuts to the side because we'll be using these later. I adjust the bevel on my mitre saw to 10 degrees. Removing as little material as possible, I cut a 10 degree bevel into the leg of my stool. First at the bottom, and then at the top. Once I've aligned my second cut, I add a stop block to the fence to be able to make a repeat cut without thinking on the second leg. Without having to measure, we end up with two perfectly sized legs. On the underside of the seat, we mark the position of the legs. I do this by eye and use a ruler with a depth stop to capture the distance from the edge of the top to the outer edge of the stool leg. From there, I can mark my two lines that I know are equally distanced from the edge of the stool top. Work smart, not hard guys. Using the reference lines, reposition the leg and mark up for the inside of each of those legs. Once we have the two positions locked in, we can mark up for our screw holes. Using a T-square, I mark for the screw holes. I use five centimeters from the edge of the stool. This is personal preference. You can do whatever you think makes sense. Place some scrap timber under your stool top. This will ensure the pilot holes don't go into your workbench. Drill your pilot holes on your marks all the way through the timber. The scrap wood will save your workbench, but it will also ensure you get minimal or no split out when the drill bit goes through. Now flip your workpiece for the next stage. Here I'll use a 12 mm spade bit to drill the countersink holes in the top of the stool. Use the pilot holes for reference and drill your countersink holes. I go about halfway into the timber here. In preparation for securing the top to the legs, I'm using two different size washers, 12 millimeter and 10 millimeter. Put the 12 millimeter washers onto your screws. Now you might be wondering why I'm using 12 mil washers when my countersink holes are also 12 mil. This is a neat trick that I've worked out and you'll see why in a second. Secure your workpiece to your bench with two of the holes overhanging. I use the awesome micro jig match fit system for this. Carefully run your screws through the timber. This will drive the stainless steel washers to the bottom of the countersink hole. Remove the screws and repeat the process on all four. So why am I doing this? Well, scaffold boards are made from soft wood. And I've found in the past that when I've drilled screws through, it's very easy to pull the washer through the timber at the same time. Having a washer the same size as the countersunk hole gives us a firm anchor for the second washer, reducing the risk of damage to the timber. Next, I put the 8mm washers onto the screws in preparation for the next stage. Drive your screws back through the timber until they just break out the underside of the seat top. This is another cool trick that's going to save you a bunch of time later. As you can see here, the screws should only stick out a really small amount. And now this is where the magic happens. Reposition your stool legs onto the underside of the top using the reference marks you drew earlier. Push each leg onto the screws until it sits flush with the stool top. This will give you two marks in the timber that will show exactly where the screws need to land. Repeat the process on the second leg. 
Now I forgot to film this part, but use those marks and drill pilot holes straight down into each leg. Now it's time for the glue up. I use Type Bond 3 here. First apply glue to the underside of the stool top and then move on to the legs. End grain absorbs glue at a rapid rate. It's a good idea to apply a layer, leave it a minute or two and then reapply a second layer. Now we place our legs onto the stool top. You'll know you've got them in the exact position because the screws that are slightly protruding from the underside of the stool top will fall straight into the pilot holes you drilled into the legs. The double washer anchor system we set up earlier means you can be slightly more aggressive with your driver here. Instead of the washers being pulled through the timber, they'll catch and pull the legs to the base of the stool. Using screws over doubts means you can continue to work without having to wait for the glue to dry. Clean up any glue squeeze out to save time later. I use baby wipes here. At this point, it's a good idea to sand your piece before you start assembling the rest of the stool. I use 125mm sandpaper from Smurdex. This is 120 grit. A lot of people will use a round over bit in their router to create a nice edge to their store. I prefer to do this with the sander as it's a rustic piece of furniture and the sander gives a less perfect finish. Just kind of matches the aesthetics of the store. Now remember those off cuts we saved from earlier? Well this is where these come into play. We'll use one of these pieces for the stretcher of our store. Roughly align where you want the stretcher to be and use the angle of the leg to mark the back. Don't worry about getting this perfect. We haven't used the mitre saw since we cut the bevels into the legs, so it's already set at the perfect angle for these cuts. Take your freshly cut stretcher and place it in to the stool. Get it where you want it, make sure that it's in the centre, and use a pencil to mark its location. The lighting makes it a bit hard to see, but I promise it's there. You can see it better on this side. Now mark up in preparation for your pilot holes. I do this by eye because it really doesn't have to be perfect. Next we drill our pilot holes from the inside of the stool to the out. Do your best to drill your pilot hole square through the timber and not at an angle. Place your stretcher back into your stool. I use a level to check the stretcher before moving on to the next stage. Now I drill back through the pilot holes and into the stretcher. This will give us a mark where the screw will need to land. Now the same as we did earlier in the stool top, I'm using the 12mm spade bit to drill halfway in for the countersink holes. Glue the ends of your stretchers, remembering it's end grain, so double up the layers here. I'm only using one washer here, I'm using the 8mm as the 10mm anchor we did earlier is not necessary for this section. As we did before, drive your screws through until they just stick out the inside of the stool. Now we align the pilot holes in the stretcher to the screws that are sticking out. This ensures we get it exactly where we want it. Now you can drive the rest of your screws into the timber. It's a good idea to hold the stretcher with your hand to stop it spinning as the screwdriver bites. So our stall is nearly done, but we've still got those ugly holes to deal with from the countersinks that we did earlier. Now you'll remember we used a 12mm spade bit for the countersinks, so we're going to use a 12mm dowel to plug those holes. I go back to the mitre saw and cut two small sections of the dowel using the 10 degree bevel we used on the legs. I reset the bevel to 0 degrees and cut another four pieces. The dowels with the 10 degree bevel will go into the legs and this will ensure more of the dowel goes into the hole for a firmer hold. The four straight cut dowels are for the top. Next we glue in the dowels. I'm using construction adhesive with an accelerator spray. Pop a small amount of the adhesive into the holes. Add some accelerator spray to the end of each dowel and knock them into the holes. Be careful not to get any glue on your hands before using the accelerator spray, as the accelerator spray will heat the glue and burn you. The glue dries incredibly fast, so there's no downtime here. I'm using a Japanese pool saw to flush cut the dowels. 
I give the stool a light sand to ensure the dowels are completely flush to the top of the stool and to the legs. Okay, so our build is complete. Next up, we need to apply the finish to give it that real rustic look. I'm going to use one of my favourites. This is Brie Wax Furniture Wax. I'm using dark oak, which is a particular favourite of mine. It's a good idea to wear gloves as this gets quite messy, and I use lint three cloths to apply the wax. I roll out some craft paper just to protect my workbench from any wax spillages. Using the lint three cloth, I wipe the wax onto the timber. Using a circular motion will help you get that wax right into the wood grain and leave you a more consistent finish. Using a second lint-free cloth, I go over the entire stool to wipe off any excess and give it a buff. This gives it the nice sheen that you see in the end. And there we have it, one complete rustic mini stool. The entire process takes about two and a half hours. This was probably a little bit longer because I was filming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing because it helps out more than you'll know. If you have any questions or any feedback, please leave them in the comments. See you in the next one.